Good afternoon, grade 12. Welcome to our business studies class. Uh, today, we're still looking at investment securities, but we're looking at part two. For those who are just joining us today, welcome to our 16th lesson. My name is Hector S. Ngosi. All right, grade 12. Before we do anything, we need to recap from what we were doing yesterday. Right. So grade 12, yesterday we looked at the factors that should be considered when making an investment decision. We spoke of return on investment. We spoke on, about risk. We spoke about the investment term or period. We spoke about, uh, yeah, we finished here under bullet number three, your investment term period. Now we need to speak about inflation rate, taxation, liquidity, and your personal budgets, I mean, your personal budgets investment, excuse me, planning factors, volatility or fluctuations on investment markets. So that's what we need to speak about now, or that, that is what is left. Now, I'm just going to quickly go to our inflation, basically. So we did return on investment, we did risks, we did investment on, 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 on uh, investment period. However, now I want us to start from inflation. That's where we finished off yesterday. Right. All right, boys and girls. So let's speak about the inflation rate. People are affected by a high inflation rate because their money or purchasing power decreases, right? So we know that a high inflation rate will lead to a decrease in purchasing power, right? Also, the return on investment, your ROI, uh, should be higher than the inflation rate, right? So very important, your ROI must be higher, higher than the inflation rate, right? So, your inflation has a positive effect on some investments such as property or shares where the income will increase as inflation decreases, basically, right? So you must know that it will have a good impact, right? On, uh, I mean, if the prices go, goes up for, 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 for remember infl what is inflation? Inflation is what is your, increases in, is, is your increase in prices, basically, right? So when when the um when your positive effect on some uh, investments such as property or shares where the income will increase as inflation uh yeah as the inflation increase very important point right then boys and girls we also need to look at personal budgets now with your personal budgets boys and girls we must know that investors can determine the amount of surplus money they can, can be invested, right? That's your personal budget. It's more personal, right? So basically, you're going to determine the amount of surplus money that can be invested. Sorry. Investors must budget for unforeseen costs. So we must budget for unforeseen costs no wonder we do a personal budget. Budget should provide a contingency plans or investment savings, right? So you must have those plans and savings in order to help you to budget much more better. Does it make sense? I hope it makes sense so far, boys and girls, and I hope you are following so far. It is very important to understand those things, basically, right? Now, let's look at liquidity. Do you understand when it comes now to liquidity? Now, liquidity, basically, we're checking on how well can you pay your short-term debts, right? Or your short-term obligations, basically, right? Now, with your liquidity is an amount that could be invested in a type of investment that can be easily be converted to cash, right? It is used to describe uh, the ease and speed which investors can convert an investment into cash, right? 
So basically, it's the conversion to cash. Example, an investment in a savings account or unit trust will be easier to convert into cash than an investment in a fixed uh, deposit, which is usually deposited for a fixed period of time. All right, great talk. I hope now you do understand what does liquidity means. Then now going to taxation. Now, when you want to look at your taxation, we know that basically uh, our companies are being taxed, um, uh, people are paying tax and stuff like that. Everything is being taxed. Remember guys, we under factors that should be considered when making an investment decision. So other investments, basically they are being taxed, basically boys and girls, right? So it is very important to uh, know uh, whether the investment that you are making, is it taxed or not, or is it tax free or not, right? So now taxation, a good investment will yield after tax returns, right? Also, your income tax implications must be considered in, in order to ensure a high net after tax return, right? So your tax in implications must be considered in order to ensure a high net tax returns. The tax rates are not necessarily the same for different investments, right? So now your tax rates, your tax rates are not necessarily the same for investments, right? Now, investment planning factors. Now let's look at bullet number one. Investors should always consider the safest possible investment opportunities, right? All right, so that's what you need to look at. Some, investment, some investments offers, offer a low income on invested capital, but it could be safer in investment than one that promises a high income, a higher income. Examine opportunities with the history of good return. Also, you must be able to do what? You must be able to divide uh, investments between various investment options. Also, the method of calculating the interest or return on investment should be considered, right? The last bullet point now is for us to check the, vol the volatility or fluctuations on investment markets. Now, here we need to check whether fluctuations in national and international economic trends should be considered, right? Also, the level of volatility will determine the amount of returns, basically, boys and girls, right? All right. Okay. Now I want us to look at the types of investments, opportunities, and risk factors. So these are your types of investments, opportunities, and the risk factors. Now let's look at one type of investments, opportunities, right? And their risk factors. Let's look at a fixed property, right? So we know that a fixed property is when you're buying a house or a piece of land, it is usually suitable as a long-term investment, right? So we know that this is a buying of house or piece of land, and we know that it's a long-term investment only, right? Large fees or taxes are payable on these transactions. So property cannot be bought or sold every year, right? So you cannot buy and sell, and sell that very same property every year, right? Because, you, because of these large fees and taxes are payable on these transactions, right? So you can only buy a house as a once-off thing. Um, then you can sell it maybe after some time because there, are a lot of, there, there were a lot of fees and taxes that were payable when you were buying that house. You know, your transfer costs, uh, all these um, funny costs that you, you, you pay or you cough when you are, uh, what you call, when you are buying a house. Now, let's look at the return on property. So the return on property is earned in a form of rental sales capital gains at a higher price than what it was bought for, including the transfer costs and taxes. So very important. What, the, what do you get when you buy a, a property? Remember you've got so many purposes about the property. You must say, you must state whether, you don't have to explain to anyone, but 
you know by yourself when you buy property that, okay, this property, I'm buying it in order for me to rent it out or I'm buying it in order for me to, 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 to use it as my store or as my saloon to render a service in order to get sales. If it's a store, it's a supermarket in order for me to get sales or this property, I'm just buying it just for capital gains. Remember your capital gains, basically, it's, a, it's an increase in your property, boys and girls, right? So it tells you that, okay, this is how much you, you are, your property should be after 10 years. It looks at the, at the uh, what you call, it looks at the, at the value and the space of that property, boys and girls. So it is very, very, very important for you to understand, basically, right? Now, let's look at... Uh, 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 the, uh, that's the return on property, right? Then the location or size of the property may also influence the growth in value. Very important, right? Location or size of property will influence the growth in value over time. Right. So for instance, guys, let's say you bought the property at a time. Um, okay, let me make an example at a, at a, at a township. Right, that property at the township, its value, it's not gonna go so much high because we know sometimes at the townships things are not okay. The crime is high there. Uh, also, people they are clustered and stuff, you know. But let's say now you buy a property uh, in a in a suburb, you know. Uh, I'm telling you the, the 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 what you call the the value of that property will go high now and then because now you in the suburb. And stuff like that the, the 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 location of the property and the size of the property says a lot in terms of the value of the property now let's look at the risks in terms of uh, uh, fixed property now if we look at the risk in terms of fixed property we know that low risk over a long time right so there's going to be a low risk over a long time because now it's going to be yours does it make sense guys uh, at the end of the day or at the end of the bond term or whatsoever then the risk may be determined by economic conditions and may influence the value of property so the risk may be determined by economic conditions and be influence the value of property does it make sense very very important boys and girls it is very important to understand these things now let's look at the mutual funds or stock fails, right? So remember guys, all of these things, guys, these are the types of investments opportunities. So you can invest under property. You can invest under mutual funds or stock fails. Now let's look at the mutual funds or stock fails, right? Now with your mutual funds, basically boys and girls, here, it is an informal savings scheme to which a relatively small group of people contribute, right? So it is what? An informal savings scheme, right? Right? Where people do want the relatively small groups of people contribute. Each member takes a turn to draw from the scheme of fund or stock fail for their own personal gains, right? So... A stock fell, those who don't know what a stock fell is or mutual funds. Now, it's like, let's say it's 10 of us. We're saying, okay, person A, we're going to pay him or her in, the, in, the, in January. Person B, we're going to pay him or her in, 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 in Feb. Person C, in March. Person D, in April. Person F, just like that, you know. So it's when we, we're more of like rotating. That's how your stock fells uh, uh, do. Right. No small return on investment, no or small return on investment as contributions are distributed monthly to one of the members, basically. So here there is no uh, uh, return on investment. It's just a circulation of money, basically. It encourages people to save each month for a specific reason. Very important, guys. Let's say now you're doing a stock fails. And, and, and let's say they, we can only pay you in December. So we pay a person in January. Let's say we give each other 1,000 rents. 
uh, we pay the January person, we give him or her thousand rands, February, just like that. Then in December, let's say you had plans, let's say uh, you're staying over at overseas or in overseas, maybe you're here in South Africa for job purposes and stuff like that. Then you tell the stock file uh, members that, you know what, I want my money in December. Can I please be the last member to be paid? Why are you saying that? So that things are going to be easier for you. You know that you're going to book your flight for December holidays. Uh, you know that by, when you're going home, you'll be having lots of money or enough money. So it was like you were saving for yourself. So you, it's like you were saving thousand rands each month for yourself uh, indirectly, basically. But you did not have with you. Remember, boys and girls, that sometimes it's good to do our fixed investments. Why? Because sometimes they do help us. They help us with what? They help us uh, to, to save a lot in such a way that uh, because sometimes when we've got money, we, we, we tend to, 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 to what you call, to sort of like use it or whatsoever, you know. Right. So that's what it, it means about no small return on investment, right? Then it encouraged people to save each month for specific reason, as I've made an example for uh, you saving up for a trip going home and in overseas. The bank fees are shared by the members, resulting in low cost of investment per member. So we must know that all the bank fees are being shared by members. In times when it is hard to get bank loans, stock fails pay out maybe in handy, right? So sometimes people are in debt and stuff like that. So your stock fall pays out may come in handy. Uh, they're going to be useful, basically, boys and girls. All right. Now, a stock fail is usually managed by a trustworthy chairman or treasurer uh, who will be responsible for keeping records and managing their bank account, right? So remember, you must be trustworthy chairman or treasurer. Members usually discuss how the money will be invested and agree on the risks uh, they will be willing to take, basically, right? Now let's look at the risk of the stock fail. The scammers uh, who claim to be running stock fails may actually be running illegal pyramid schemes and payouts may not be possible as cash has run out or members may lose their savings, right? So please, 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 guys, please make sure. No wonder majority of the time, it's very advisable to do a stock fail with the people that you trust. Uh, you can do your stock fail with the, uh, your family members. You can do your stock fail with your best friends, maybe from years, 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 years. You guys know each other and stuff. Uh, money in savings account is safe, is a safe investment, but with low interest rates, the returns are low, right? So remember, we're just putting the money in the savings account, right? So, is, uh, I mean, uh, the interest is quite low there because that money is flexible. We can pay it out at any time. We can take it out at any time. Remember, if it's a fixed uh, account, therefore the interest is quite high. But for a flexible account, the interest, no more, majority of the time, it's a bit lower. All right. Now let's look at the managed portfolio. Now your managed portfolio now, an investor instructs a financial institution, bank or financial advisor to manage his or her various investments or assets in one portfolio. So investor instructs whoever, right, to manage their portfolio. If the portfolio does not form well, does not perform well as expected, the portfolio or parts therefore may be changed with or without informing the investor. Does it make sense? So it is very important. Remember what is a portfolio? A portfolio is like a group of investments uh, uh, in one place. We call it one portfolio, basically a group of funds or group of investments. You can have in one portfolio, you can have five investments, meaning you can invest in shares, you can invest in a bank, you can invest uh, 
with your Bitcoin and stuff like that, that's a portfolio, a managed portfolio. But what is the risk when it comes to a portfolio? A risk is lower over a long-term period. So remember a portfolio, it's a different investment in one portfolio. So basically, if the other investment does not go well, the other investments won't be affected because it's different funds, right? Investments are made in various sectors or companies. Therefore, the risk is spread and better managed by foot portfolio manager. Money is usually invested in the capital market and unforeseen circumstances may impact and negatively on the value of the portfolio on short term or higher risk over the short term. Right, those were your managed portfolio. Now let's look at our fixed deposit, right? So fixed deposit, you always need to compare it with what? You always need to compare it with your flexible uh, uh, deposits basically, right? Like your stock fare. Right. Fixed deposit is when, in a simple English, okay, before I do that, let me give you a minute to think in your own words. Let me know what a fixed deposit is. Just in your own words and explain it to me. You can raise up your hand, I'll unmute you, or you can um, write on the chat box, right, and your time starts now. All right, grade 12s, your time just ended now. Now, a fixed deposit. Remember a fixed deposit, guys. Uh, okay, I can see people are not participating. I don't know. Maybe I'm scared because you're writing a test tomorrow, our informal task. Um, I hope you are ready for that. And remember, it's based on your things that we've been covering, basically, right? So please, 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 please make sure that you are comfortable with uh, the, 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 what you call, you are comfortable with your tests, right? So it is an important test. So please, please take it serious as it will make you to see the things that you don't understand and the things that you understand. That's the purpose for the test, right? Now, with your fixed deposit, it is a very conservative method of investing of investment at a fixed rate and uh, for a fixed period of time at a financial institution or bank. So in investment, it's when you're taking a hundred thousand, a fixed deposit. It's when you're taking a hundred thousand and you want to invest it for 15 years. So which means you can only withdraw it after 15 years, right? That's your fixed uh, deposit. Money cannot be withdrawn or added during the period of the fixed deposit. So there's a difference between a fixed deposit and a flexible uh, investment, right? So a fixed deposit investment, you can't touch it. You can't even add more. You can't even take less, right? So where else in a stock fell, we keep on adding each month. No wonder we say the interest is small. But your fixed deposit, you just take a lump sum of money and you put it in the bank and it's going to belong to you for the rest of your uh, what you call for the rest of the investment duration right then your investors have to be certain that they will not access or need the money for the period of the deposit right now let's look at the risk when it comes to the fixed deposit there's a very low risk 
as the investor will receive what was promised at the end of the period. As the interest was promised, no, sorry. As the interest rate is usually fixed, the return will not be affected by the market fluctuations. Very important because here, where else your variable interest is, it is affected by your market fluctuations. If there is uh, what you call, uh, if there is, um, what can you call this? If like, like there is high prices in inflation, your interest will be affected. Anything that has to do with market fluctuations, uh, your interest will be affected. Let's look at this one. Let's look at uh, 32 day notice accounts uh, or call deposits, right? Sometimes guys, um, if you have invested your money in a fixed deposit and now uh, let's say for some reasons you do face your unforeseen circumstances, let's say you are involved in a big serious problem, uh, you can always, always, always call the bank and be like, you know what, I need the money ASAP. But the bank will only take 32 days notice uh, in order for you to give, in order for them to give you your money. So no, no one I'm sure you've seen or you've heard your parents or your guardians it's speaking about the 32 days notice or call deposits. So in a nutshell, a 32 days notice is the money investment invested at a rate, although withdrawals may be may, may, may be made provided the bank is given 32 days notice of withdrawals. It earns more interest than a current check or savings account, but less interest than a fixed deposit. So there's a 32 days notice, there's a fixed deposit one, uh, there's a current account, there's a check account, and there's a savings account. So these things, there are so many, right? But the core one, the, or the, the, the top one, is your fixed deposit investment because now you know that you're going, just going to put that. Then you're just going to withdraw it after five years. You're just going to withdraw it after 10 years. Some people put their money and just withdraw it after 20 years, you know. So it is very important, boys and girls. Please, 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 please make sure that you do understand each and every point of this. All right. Okay. The risk when it comes to 32 days notice is that there's a low risk. As the investment plus the interest will be paid out on the maturity date of investment. Interest is calculated on a daily balance, accelerating the value or return on the investment, lowering the risk. Interest rate may fluctuate with market conditions, increasing the risk, isn't it? All right, great jobs. Thank you so much for tuning in. Tomorrow we'll finish from debentures and I'll explain to you all your debentures and stuff, right? Thanks for tuning in, boys and girls. I appreciate you so much. Please, please, please study hard. You're almost there, boys and girls. You can do this. And remember that you can be whatever you want to be in this world. You just need to believe and trust yourself. From my side, thank you so much and have a lovely evening. Goodbye.